Also breaking this hour, the White House just issuing a new denial that it knew anything about efforts to block State Department whistleblowers from telling their story on Capitol Hill this week. We're told those whistleblowers will tell lawmakers on Wednesday that on the night of the attack, September 11th of 12, then Secretary of State Hillary Clinton knew more about requests for additional security than she has let on. And there is a detailed email exchange that happened in the days after the attack, just surfacing now that our next guest feels looks particularly damning, damning for this administration. Our guest, Dana Perino, former White House press secretary under President George W. Bush and co-host of The Five right here on FNC. And Dana, as I look at the exchange, documented, well documented by Steve Hayes mm -hmm. of the Weekly Standard, he goes through what happened on Friday. The terror attack was on a Tuesday. And on Friday, uh, it shows the, the State Department in a scramble to cover their own backsides. And remember what happens on Friday night at the White House, Megan, is you get ready for the Sunday shows. It's not like you go out for happy hour. You have to get ready because, and that was a big one. Remember, Susan, Ambassador Susan Rice was chosen as the one to go out to do all of the Sunday shows, and you get the talking points on the Friday night. Mm -hmm. They go through an interagency clearance process. What surprises me about this is that you see communications people, Victoria Newland at the State Department, saying to the interagency group, these will not pass muster with my leadership. Revise because it, we don't want the State Department to look bad. And let's just, let me just jump in and tell the viewers what the original draft was saying that came from the Intel people. Now I've got sort of the the red line copy and and the mm -hmm. the black line copy shows sort of what was crossed out after State raised an objection. Victoria Newland on behalf of her boss. Uh, this is what they took out. On 10 September, this is what we were supposed to be telling Susan Rice to tell the world on that Sunday, but we didn't. On, Sept on 10 September, the agency, meaning CIA, notified Embassy Cairo of social media reports calling for a demonstration and encouraging jihadists to break into the embassy, stricken. There are indications that Islamic extremists participated in the violent demonstrations, stricken. The agency has produced numerous pieces on the threat of extremists linked to al-Qaeda in Benghazi and eastern Libya, stricken. All of that came out because, we, it looks, uh, it appears, that Victoria Newland was voicing her, quote, serious concerns about that draft and worried that members of Congress would use the talking points to criticize the State Department for, quote, not paying attention to agency warnings. Right on, Victoria. Yeah, she's spot on. And as a communications professional, I can understand trying to put the best spin on it. I could never understand asking the intelligence community to absolutely change the facts of, their t of the guidance that they were, get that they were providing. Mm -hmm. And then two days later, so fr that's Friday night, they go through three rounds, there's a 6.30 round, another one at 7.30, another one at 9.30. Now they're getting somewhere because basically they're going to blame a video that they've just made, th this is, comes out of nowhere. Susan Rice goes on the Sunday shows, they use it but for But before we get days. to Susan Rice, I just want to tell the viewers, so the epilogue, as you say, they go through a, a several drafts of this. And Victoria keeps writing back that her superiors remained unhappy. The changes she wrote that they took out all this stuff, mm -hmm. quote, did not resolve all my issues or those of my building leadership. And moments later, this is according to Steve Hayes reporting again, uh, uh, citing the House report, White House officials responded by stating that the State Department's concerns would have to be taken into account. Now that's your old job. That's, that's right. the you of the current administration. And that's basically saying, fix it. Do what she says. And we're, we're not going to have any more discussion about this, okay? This is what you are going to do. This goes back to so many different things. One of them is just last week when uh, Press Secretary Jay Carney said Benghazi was a long time ago. Mm -hmm. I wonder who is not protecting Jay Carney at the White House or why is he not protecting himself? Because these emails come out, uh, this the whole discussion that Victoria Newland has, it's now public two days later. Mm -hmm. And it makes him look like he didn't either didn't know or was hoping that the press wouldn't cover it at it all. It was a long time ago, diminishing what happened. And you have to wonder if the Time Bureau Chief Jay Carney of yesterday. That, that was his job have, before he took over White Would House look president. at this with a, with a fresh eye, let's say that he hasn't become press secretary. If he's reported and he's looking at all of this, would he think that something does not add up here? And one of your jobs as press secretary is to play the role of a reporter mm -hmm. and to say to them, I'm not changing those talking points. What's factually incorrect come about out. these talking points this because is we have to protect out. the president and we need to do the right thing. And the right thing, hopefully, will be done on Wednesday when there's finally a hearing about it. And, and what do you make of the, 
the strong arming that appeared to be going on by Victoria. I mean, no one cares what Victoria Newland thinks, with all due respect to Ms. Newland. She's the State Department no, she's spokesperson. Saying, she worked for Hillary Clinton at the time. That's right. And so she says her, her building leadership. Above her would have been, I, you know, I suppose, the chief of staff, uh, the deputy secretary of state, or the secretary of state herself. Somebody was saying, we, we at the State Department, now maybe they're right. Maybe all of this is just a huge misunderstanding, and they would be better off to come out and just lay it all out there. Instead, they've dragged it on for so long that now you're, we're just looking at the black and white of these emails and realizing there was some sort of, uh, not just a, a cleaning up of the talking points, but wholesale changes. Mm -hmm. And asking the intel community to go along with that is surprising, and I cannot believe that the intel community agreed to do it. And the thing is, Dana, let, let's take a step forward now. So then Susan Rice goes on those Sunday talk shows. Mm -hmm. It's about a video. It's a video. It wasn't pre-planned. wasn't premeditated. I mean, despite all that stuff I just read to the viewers that had been blacklined out of the talking points. Um, and then reports start to service. Uh, CBS News' Cheryl Atkinson's been doing a good job covering this. Our own Catherine Harridge and Jennifer Griffin were and all Stephen over Hayes. it. And Stephen Hayes. And Stephen Hayes. So a few, a f not everybody, but a few started challenging the official version and started to say, wait a minute. And then it comes out, there were no protests. There were no protests at all prior to. It was calm at the embassy prior to this attack. Um, and we know who was behind it. And the al-Qaeda element and all of it starts to come out. And rather than just saying, you're, you're right. right. And that would have been the they best. They try to tell us that they were being straightforward all along. And don't forget, the president and Hillary Clinton tape a joint public service announcement for the people of Pakistan to tell them we didn't have anything to do with the video. The video that didn't have anything to do with Benghazi. Right. And that, they would have been better off of just ripping this band aid off earlier. And also, here's the other thing if they, if they tried to fix this because they thought it was going to hurt the president in the re election efforts, I think that they're wrong. I think America would have said, it's impossible to get everything right all of the time. Well, what are we going to do to make things better in the future? And they would have given them a pass. Mm -hmm. And instead, they've dragged this out. They make it well, sound that, like but, there's but, a conspiracy. But now there's not. a question about whether they may have saved Barack Obama's re-election chances and damaged Hillary Clinton's election uh, chances. chances. Now, future. I realize that the mainstream media has not been all over Benghazi. But these emails are not good. And the whistleblower testimony, and this, you know, it's their perspective, and there will be other perspectives already, perspectives that come out contradicting what the whistleblowers are going to say, which is that they, they put politics ahead of security. Um, the question is, as somebody who's been, you know, in politics for a while, whether you think this will hurt her, her and her chances, because so far everybody's been saying she's an unstoppable that machine. She's, tef she's like, uh, defies Teflon. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I think it's too soon to say if it will or if it won't hurt her in the future. Mm -hmm. I do think that if you are just, um, if you're J John Q. Public and you're reading this in the morning paper, hopefully, if you get, get to read it in your morning, morning paper, you would think, well, this further reduces my confidence in our government. Mm -hmm. And that's the, that's the bigger, sadder piece here. And there was a stand down order that was given. You're going to hear a lot about that, just aside from the communications part. A stand down order was given. That's the accusation by the whistleblower that was the, in, the second in command. That has been refuted by someone who says, no, that's not true. There was no stand down order. Challenge. Somewhere in, somewhere in the middle there, as a lawyer, you could say, okay, let's just set out all of the evidence and decide what is, what is the truth. Mm -hmm. That's right. And, and there will be different versions, but the viewers and the American public will get to hear a version that they have not yet had fully shared with them. Right. And then now there's questions about the folks who did the internal review at the State Department in the first place, whether we need to, we are going to review that review. And on it goes. We'll be all over it tomorrow on Wednesday. Dana, thanks. Thanks. See you tonight on the 5.